So here's just a quick uh, illustration of how to use the new rangefinder uh, reticle import mechanism that comes with Ballistic. First I'm going to go into Safari uh, and actually go to my manufacturer's website. So if you got your scope from Night Force or Leopold or whatever, a lot of them often have a, uh, a list of reticles. Nightforceoptics.com slash reticles is where Night Force has theirs. Leopold has one at leopold.com slash reticles. Um, scroll down and find whatever reticle uh, you're currently using. On Night Force's website, if you tap on it, it'll actually bring up a larger picture. Uh, and then you want to tap and hold the image and select Save Image. That'll save it to your photo album. You want to use the biggest image you can possibly find for the best quality. Then go back to Ballistic. Um, once you're inside of uh, Ballistic, if you tap on the Rangefinder tab, uh, you'll see that there's an Optics Profile option there. Uh, you need to create a new Optics Profile, and then the first option you'll see is Image. Uh, tap on Image, and then there's an option marked Use Photo Library. Select that option. You'll find the reticle that you saved uh, in the photo album. Now you want to move the blue marker down to where the very bottom of that reticle is where you first measure uh, your target. Um, so that's going to be the bottom line of this scope. Then I'm going to enter 5 here because this is a 5 mil reticle. It's 5 mils from the bottom to the center of the reticle. Uh, I'll set the image filter to standard. That'll help clean up the reticle image so it'll look better uh, in ballistic. Enter whatever magnification you're using. Uh, if the scope, for example, uh, ranges at 10x, which is how most uh, second focal plane scopes uh, range, then enter that. And then afterwards, you can just save uh, this optics profile. Uh, once you save it uh, into Ballistics as an optics profile, you'll then need to select it in order to have it appear on the screen. So now that you've saved it, just go ahead and tap on it. Um, and at this point, if you slide over and look, you can see the reticle that you downloaded. And as you go and adjust the, um, the size of the target um, or, uh, you know, adjust the, the top and, and bottom dials, you'll see um, it moving and changing inside the reticle. Now, you can double tap anywhere in the rangefinder to adjust the anchor point. There are nine different anchor points where you can anchor your target. Um, you can double tap. Uh, in the center, um, and others use the, the very bottom to measure, whatever is most convenient for you. Now you don't have any ballistics data here yet because you don't have a load defined. So you've got the reticle set up, but you need to now set up a load um, so that you can actually get your elevation and windage. So for this, go back to trajectory. We're going to just pick a load from the loads database here. Um, you know, we'll just pick 3030 Winchester, for example, and just whatever load you happen to be shooting, um, you can either select that from loads or you can enter the data uh, yourself. That'll fill in the muzzle velocity, the ballistic coefficient, and then hit calculate. This will bring up the trajectory chart. Now you want to tap that action button in the upper right and add this to favorites. Um, that will prompt you to save it under a name and you can also optionally save some notes. Once that's in favorites, you can tap favorites and you'll see it there, you can bring it up. The favorites is what the rangefinder is going to use to give you ballistics profiles. So tap on that ballistics profile field, then tap on the new favorite that you created. Uh, and now if you scroll back over, you can see that you've got uh, elevation, windage, you've got path in inches, MOA, uh, you can adjust the wind velocity and wind direction at the bottom and you'll see all of this update uh, inside the, um, the reticle readout, the head up display. So we'll just we'll change the target speed a little bit. You can go reverse with the target speed. You get a blue line on either side showing you the holdovers, but you'll also see the lead in the bottom represented in MOA. Um, you can also change that to mil if you like. So we'll play with the magnification a little bit. You can see just how these dials change. Now when you tap the lock button, that'll prevent you from accidentally sliding over um, to the left settings page. And we'll just play a little bit here. Um, the left slider shows you how big the target appears in your reticle. So you can see here you're, we're scrolling up near four mils. And then the top slider actually defines the target size. So for example, you're looking at a two yard tall target or a six foot target. Um, you can adjust this to any size you want. Ballistic will use both of those settings to determine what your actual distance is to the target. Um, so let's go back over to settings. I'll just walk through a couple other settings. You can adjust the zero range. But if you scroll back over, you can see that the bullet drop compensator now shows you the holdovers for the 1, 2, and 400 um, uh, distances. 
Um, if I change my shooting angle, let's say I'm shooting at a 20 degree angle, it's going to adjust the elevation um, uh, it, for that as well as the holdovers. Change that back. Uh, a couple other features that the rangefinder has, if you push that core location button at the top, you can see here that it's downloading the current atmosphere. It uses your GPS coordinates to figure out where you are and then downloads this information from a local uh, weather station or weather service. There are three different weather services you can specify uh, in ballistic settings. Uh, also, you can change the output if you don't want MOA. If you want uh, mil, for example, you can select the MRAD, which is mil, short for milliradians, um, and now you'll get your path and your windage uh, in mils instead of in, in uh, MOA. You can adjust for Coriolis acceleration. You tap that little location icon. It's going to grab your latitude, and then it'll give you three seconds to point into the direction uh, of your fire to set the azimuth. Uh, it'll again automatically correct the rangefinder uh, in order to compensate for those settings.